I'm going to start off playing um, Gilles Deleuze just to hear a few words of him speaking in French. Je n'ai pas besoin de la philosophie pour réfléchir. Je veux dire, les seuls gens capables effectivement de réfléchir sur le cinéma, ce sont les cinéastes ou les critiques de cinéma ou ceux qui aiment le cinéma. Ils n'ont absolument pas besoin de la philosophie pour réfléchir sur le cinéma. L'idée que... So, let me just say a few words about uh, Gilles Deleuze. Um, uh, he was born in, in, uh, in Paris in 1925 and subsequently became a philosopher of uh, a professor of philosophy at the University of Paris, uh, Paris 8, Université de Paris 8, where Foucault and uh, Félix Guattari, two individuals with whom he's very closely associated, were also uh, teaching. He died in 1995 by suicide after throwing himself out of the window of his apartment. His ill health, he had lost a, a lung, uh, he had a lung removed because of tuberculosis, which caused him severe respiratory problems for the rest of his life might have been a contributing factor in his suicide. Deleuze has enjoyed a reputation as one of the most innovative thinkers in an age increasingly preoccupied with the question of complexity. Indeed, Michel Foucault once predicted that the, the 20th century would be known as Deleuzean and possibly the 21st century. And of course, Deleuze himself wrote a book on Foucault. So the connection between the two of them is very close. Deleuze's thought is a combination of a commentary on other thinkers, notably Nietzsche and Foucault, and his own highly original investigation, investigation suffused in his later work by the influence of his collaborator, the radical psychoanalyst Felix Guattari. We've already come across uh, Deleuze's thinking in the session on Foucault, and in many ways we could see this as um, uh, a kind of extension beyond that. Uh, he uh, he adds to the kind of discussion about uh, the issues of control um, in his in his in his thinking about um, uh, in in discussion about the this the 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 this postscript of society control where um, following on from the, the the kind of the shift from the I guess the erosion of the hegemony of the physical from physical containment to the panopticon has been a physical space controlled by the gaze uh, uh, Deleuze talks about how in our contemporary world we have shifted from factories to corporations and from machines to computers computers and the physical discipline has been replaced by more gaseous systems of control where the credit has supplanted the gaze of the foreman and humankind is no longer enclosed by physical space but also enclosed but enclosed forever trapped by debt ensnared in a system of limitless postponement the other essay that he uh, uh, that is included in rethinking architecture is something on, is an essay on the city state where he he looks at the kind of the the, the difference between the state as a kind of top down system uh, that is controlling things and, and and the city as a kind of place of the free flow of circulations and circuits he was above all uh, a theorist of flux plurality and movement Deleuze rejected the more traditional concepts of sameness and rep representation in favor of repetition, proliferation, and difference. He elaborated a series of concepts such as the monad, the striated, and the fold, and particularly championed the rhizome, which we will look at uh, later. But it would be an injustice to the sophistication of Deleuze's thought to attempt any shorthand definition of the terms. It is precisely the fluidity of his thought that de denies such totalizing strategies. And I would say that Deleuze is possibly the most difficult uh, commentator to really, to, or thinker that we'd be addressing, to really try and um, appraise. Somehow he always escapes any attempt to kind of pin him down in some senses. So Deleuze's work was prolific, and I'm not showing you all his books here, but these are some of the books that he wrote on his own. Um, perhaps most famously, De uh, Difference and Repetition on the left-hand side, but he also wrote a book on, on Francis Bacon, the painter, and, and two books on the cinema. He didn't, however, write anything on architecture, apart from made of making a few allusions to architecture in his other writing. But perhaps the most important influence on him was Felix Guattari, uh, seen here on the right-hand side. Uh, and in some senses, they also kind of constitute some kind of rhizome in themselves. Um, uh, Andrew Ballantyne will be talking more about uh, um, Felix Guattari um, later on. And it was their collaborations um, um, that perhaps Deleuze is most famous for, Anti-Oedipus, Capitalism and Schizophrenia, A Thousand Plateau, Capitalism and Schizophrenia, which I use a lot in my teaching, and their book, which was very popular at the time, What is Philosophy? 
I want to um, start off by trying to sort of elaborate some of the conceptual pairings that seem to underpin um, the work of, uh, of Deleuze. Um, and one of those pairings is between the nomad, um, between the nomadic and the sedentary. Um, he's actually not referring to literal nomads. I'm showing you a video here of literal nomads. Um, he's referring to always towards towards concepts, um, to, uh, towards concepts. And in fact, he doesn't really refer to forms at all. Um, uh, and it is the concept of the nomadic, of the the deterritorialized, that really is central to his thinking. Nonetheless, in a strange way, one can see that with a nomad, something else coming out. That is to say, you can see the way in which these terms, these conceptual pairings somehow fold into one another through a kind of process of, of reciprocal presupposition. The idea of being nomadic, nomadic ultimately folds into the notion of the sedentary. The idea of being deterritorialized feeds into the notion of the, of the of territorialization itself. So really what Deleuze is talking about is the idea of nomadic thought, of, of deterritorialized thinking rather than physical deterritorialization. But nonetheless, there's something here that begins to sort of echo in some senses because the nomad is in fact very much aware of territory. The fact that you can move anywhere um, doesn't mean to say you're gonna move anywhere. The fact that you can be um, living anywhere, operating anywhere online these days means that actually not that place is unimportant, but play, place is precisely very important. Um, why be in a kind of decaying industrial town when you could be sitting near a beach in California. Um, uh, so you get this kind of the sense in which there, there is a kind of a, a play between these things. Deleuze was very much against the idea of binary oppositions, but somehow the idea of fold these, these, these ideas folding in one, into one another make a comparison with the notion of the dialectic only too inevitable. Um, it's not really the dialectic is referring to, it's something else. The dialectic, in other words, is the way in which two opposites are often seen to be to be more close than they might at first appear. The, my favorite example is the one that Zizek uses to describe the difference between the photograph and the, the, the movie. The photograph being a frozen moment and the movie being a, an animated continuum. But as, as Zizek points out, they're both part of the same thing because in the end, the, 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 the photograph is itself taken out of the continuum and a movie is itself made out of a series of frozen photographs that stitched together in an animated continuum. And so precisely when we see these nomads carefully uh, searching out the place in which they're gonna uh, um, uh, to rebuild their tents and so on, you can see that the notion of territory, where you take your, your, your cattle to graze and so on, is a fundamental part of how they operate. I want to then just kind of sketch out a few of the kind of conceptual pairings that you can find in Deleuze's work, not just the nomadic and the sedentary, and again, it's not the physical appearance, it's the conceptual notion that is important, but also the notion of smooth and striated, which is one of the, one of the kind of key, key concepts. Um, the smooth doesn't mean the physically smooth. What's, what Deleuze means by smooth is that which is not controlled, and he, he opposes that to the notion of striation, which means the controlled. And for Deleuze, the idea of the ocean or the sea, that's the kind of uh, the quintessential space, smooth space, where you can move around. So it's not about the smoothness of surface, but the idea of, of, of avoiding control itself. Similar um, concepts such as the felt as opposed to woven fabric illustrate this point where the felt is a, a kind of matted collection of, uh, of fibers that are not connected, whereas the uh, woven fabric is, is very precisely controlled. Another kind of uh, a pair of a conceptual, um, another conceptual pairing in Deleuze's work is the difference between the, the, the tree and the rhizome. The tree is some kind of uh, um, a discrete entity that uh, is, 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 uh, uh, stands on its own, whereas the rhizome is a kind of interconnected network. And grass is a good example of a rhizome. Likewise, you can think about maybe uh, ginger roots or um, the banyan tree, where they, it kind of reconnects with itself. In architectural terms, uh, they refer to, uh, in A Thousand Plateau, they refer to the difference between what they refer to as the Gothic and the, the Romanesque. I think the Romanesque really means the classical in general. Um, uh, um, but essentially what they're pointing to is not architecture or, or indeed a style of architecture, but rather a way of thinking. Um, the, the, the Romanesque or the classical, we might say, that is to say the kind of, you go from the, 
from the, 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 the classical to, to, the, to, the, to, to the Romanesque, to the, um, to the Renaissance, to the Mannerist, to the Brock, to the neoclassical and so on, is about fitting things into a kind of visual template. It's based very much on representation, whereas the Gothic is about understanding forces and flows. Um, they're also distinguished as, in the sense that the, the, the Romanesque or the classical is seen as what, what in, in terms of what Deleuze calls the major sciences, the state sciences, you're following a rule book in terms of proportions and so on, whereas the Gothic is more part of the minor sciences, part of experimental um, uh, construction, where maybe, maybe during that process, the vault will, might collapse and you'd rebuild it and rebuild it in an experimental sort of way. Um, you could see this in a sense also in terms of the difference between um, two other conceptual pairings in, in, um, in, in Deleuze's work, the, the, morphogenetic, the morphogenetic and the hylomorphic. Um, the hylomorphic is when you impose form on, on matter from a, in a top-down way, as in this CNC milling uh, going on on the, on the left-hand side, side, whereas the morphogenetic is when, is when matter and material is allowed to express itself according to its internal forces, as seen here on the right-hand side with the balloon um, finding its form. And in architectural terms, then, you can possibly see that distinction between these two seemingly similar um, structures, in the sense they're made of curves, uh, Frank Gehry's uh, uh, Walt Disney Concert Hall on the left-hand side, and uh, a building in, in Holland by UN Studio, Transport Inter Interchange, uh, in the sense that on, on the left-hand side, it's largely about representation. The structure is, is held together by a steel framework that doesn't necessarily, isn't morphogenetic, whereas on the right-hand side, uh, 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 the structure which has been um, uh, designed by, by Cecil Bauman is really a, a, a very precise structural understanding of things. It might come out as a curve, but the way of thinking behind these two structures is very different. It's a difference, in other words, between the hylomorphic and the morphogenetic. Let me play you then um, a video. I want to move on to discuss the theme of the rhizome and the theme of becoming two central ideas that are in Indela's in, in Deleuze's work, and which I refer to in my my book Camouflage. Um, and what I'm showing you here is a relationship between a relationship of becoming between a wasp and an orchid. Uh, what is interesting about this process. Um, it, which is described in biological terms as a form of mutualism, is that the two depend on one another. They've, they've grown to depend upon one another. In other words, what the wasp is doing is, is, uh, is, 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 is it's been a, the wasp has been attracted by uh, the, the, the nectar in, in the flower and is gorging itself on that nectar, but the orchid is, is, uh, is making use of the wasp. Uh, the, the mechanism, as the, as the wasp is gorging it, so it forces, triggers off this uh, this uh, uh, this form coming down, which is laden with pollen, and the pollen then um, finds its way onto the back of the of the wasp, and then the orchid, and then, sorry, then the wasp once it's when it's, once it's finished or the nectar then uh, flies onto the next orchid, thereby uh, uh, cross pollinating the different orchids, and it's this process that is is one that is kind of fascinating for Deleuze and Guattari. The logic then is one of becoming. It is not a question of imitating some entity so much as entering into its logic. The term becoming captures the dynamic interaction between wasp and orchid. Becoming, becoming animal, becoming female, becoming molecular, becoming imperceptible, becoming other is a key concept in Deleuze's work. All forms of becoming are essentially about becoming other and involve a creative engagement with the other on the part of the subject. At the same time, a state of becoming is not constituted by any particular entity. It concerns, it concerns the space between various entities and constitutes a line of flight between them. Becoming is clearly an interactive process. It can never be limited to one individual entity. Becoming, um, uh, uh, it, it can never be limited to one individual entity becoming another. Becoming always involves a, a reciprocity a mutual interaction. De Deleuze and Guattari refer to this operation between the wasp and the orchid as a block of becoming. Through this process of becoming, a form of deterritorialization is affected. 
Deterritorialization might be described in terms of nomadology as an urge to resist stratification, a compulsion to be continually mobile and unconstrained by st uh, structured systems of control. In order to become other, we have to enter into a machinic assemblage with the other, an assemblage of parts that works and produces. The machine here is anything that operates and is conditioned by material flows. The machine therefore extends beyond any, any distinction between the mechanical and the organic to include both domains. The assemblage, meanwhile, could be defined as a loose affiliation of individual components that have come together to form a single body, but a body which is never stable or unified, an ace-centered multiplicity that is subjective to continuous movement and variation. And one such assemblage would be the one between the wasp and the orchid, which should be understood as a multiplicity, as a multiplicity of multiple wasps and multiple orchids. Yet these connections are rhizomatic and remain in constant flux. They must never be they must never subscribe to any totalizing system. They must always be incomplete, always open-ended, and always in a state of becoming. What results is a dynamic rhizomatic system which remains stable but never fixed. Another way to describe the process of becoming then is through the concept of the rhizo. Wasp and orchid as heterogeneous elements form a rhizo. The rhizome is itself a figure borrowed from biology, opposed to the principle of foundation and origin, which is embodied in the figure of the tree. The model of the tree is hierarchical and centralized, whereas the rhizome is proliferating and serial, functioning by means of the principles of connection and heterogeneity. The rhizome is a multiplicity and as, and as, as such seeks to move away from the binary subject object structure of Western thought. The rhizome achieves a sense of becoming, it affects a form of correspondence between the self and the other. But it should be stressed that the rhizome is not a form of representation. The rhizome steps beyond the limits of representation. Writing, for example, does not represent the, world's, the world, it forms a rhizome with it. We might therefore associate becoming in the process of adaptation and, and assimilation, which, uh, which is related to formation rather than form, but nonetheless operates through form. In such a context, we might understand design as a rhizomatic interaction between human beings and their environment. For Deleuze and Guattari, then, it is precisely through art, writing, philosophy, and other cultural activities such as design that one breaks down the barriers between the self and the other and becomes imperceptible. Let me just f f finish up by saying a few words about the reception of Deleuze uh, in the world of architecture. One cannot mention Deleuze without mentioning Mamel de Landa, somebody who has been instrumental in um, championing Deleuze's thought, especially in his early work. Um, this is a book that had a profound influence on me, A Thousand Years of Nonlinear History, um, that followed on from his first work, War in the Age of Intelligent Machines. And, and led on to a series of other works where he, he begins to kind of progressively look at other subjects. But the influence, I would say, of Deleuze is, begins to slip away to, in his later work. What is interesting about Delander's approach is that in, he focuses, first of all, only on, on, on Deleuze and doesn't address Guattari at all. And secondly, he, um, he, he, in many ways, he tries to simplify, to explain, uh, to de-postmodernize um, Deleuze. And this leads to a particular take on, 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 on Deleuze, one that is, on the one hand, I think, much clearer than the, the, the standard understanding. At the same time, it is a kind of a particular take that is very much Delanders Deleuze. Contrasted to that, perhaps, we could see uh, other engagements. Um, Deleuze published a book on the fold that seems to have been the inspiration behind um, an issue of architectural design um, <clears throat> on folding and architecture that seems to me to really in a rather unfortunate ways to misunderstand what Deleuze is talking about. Deleuze is not talking about forms, he's talking about concepts. And it seems to me the same problem that happened with the word deconstruction, where architects automatically assumed that Derrida was referring to some form of construction, afflicts the question about the fold itself. Um, according to philosophers, what the fold is all about is the formation of different forms of subjectivities. It's nothing to do with literal form. It's nothing to do with the foldings of form. It's the folding of the subjectivity itself.
Likewise, in that book, there's a there's a, a a diagram of the Baroque house that appears, which which misleadingly is presented as though it is a plan or a design for a house. But in fact, according to the f philosophers, it's really intended as an allegory to theorize the conceptual the, the the Baroque construction of the conceptual pair reading and seeing. It's nothing to do with literal architecture as such. The other group that was fascinated by Deleuze, and especially the concept of the fold, is a surface. I found out from John Rachman, I didn't realize that, but that's precisely why Deleuze actually refers to surfing in some of his, in some of his, um, his writings. Are the surfers thinking about the fold as a form, or are they thinking about the, 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 the wave as a form of, of morphogenetic um, formation? I don't know exactly, but it is interesting that the fact that Deleuze himself refers back to the surface in his own writings. If we are to look, though, at the, maybe the, the, the most authoritative text on Deleuze, um, uh, I would point towards these, these three books. Um, the two edited editions that Helen herself, Helen Fritcher, was involved in, Deleuze and Architecture and Deleuze and the City, and then the, um, the book uh, the, the, authored by Andrew Ballantyne, Deleuze and Guattari, for architects, and it seems to me these are probably the, maybe the most precise um, uh, books and things. I should I should also add perhaps um, that uh, Bernard Cash uh, was a student. The architect Bernard Cash was a student under Deleuze, but he, in many ways his own work has moved away from Deleuzean thinking.